I want to talk today just for a while on fatal attraction. Fatal attraction. You may be seated. I am just elated how there is so much gifting in the body of Christ. I, every man in the body of Christ and every woman have been given a gift by God. And what you do with that gift determines how far you serve the Lord our God. It, 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 is, it, 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 it is very imperative that you understand that your gifting is what makes you who you are. My Bible says that there are some talents that were given unto man. But it's good that you can improve on talents. If you sing, you can sing better. If you play an instrument, you can play it better. You, you, all you have to do is practice, and practice will help you do better with your talent. But every good and perfect gift comes from God. Your gifting from God comes from your birth. And when God gives it to you, you might not even know him, but you're gifted. Because my Bible even tells me that even the gifted shall know when God calls upon them. It is something about the gifting of man that if we are not careful, we will use our gifts in wrong ways. In other words, we will prostitute our gifts. We have to be careful how we take money for our gifts. We have to be careful who beats us up and makes us use our gifts in ways that God is not pleased with. But it's good to know that even if you're born with no legs or no arms, even if you're born with muscles of difference, if, even if you're uh, uh, born with some kind of other kind of uh, just terminal disease, uh, whatever you're born with, you're also born with gifts. It is good that God is no respect of person and gives everybody something that they can hang their hat on. I'm glad that God is doing that. And when we look at this text, we see a man that is gifted. Samson didn't work for his gift. Samson didn't go work out. Nowhere in the scripture it says that Samson worked out. Nowhere in the scripture it says that he put trees on logs together. And nowhere in the scripture it says he lifted weights up. Stones or bricks. Or, it says nothing like that. It says that he was born with great strength. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it was so uh, uh, imperative that he was born with this crazy strength that even when you looked at Samson, you had to ask the question how is it and where does your gift lie? And how is it that you're so strong? If a man is strong, you can look at it, his muscles are budging. You say to yourself, I know he's strong. But Samson was not like that. He was just a regular human being walking around. We don't know how skinny he was or nothing, but they kept on asking, where do your strength lie? Yeah. Where are you getting this incredible strength that you're able to tack gates and posters off, that you're able to lift and kill lions, and you're able to, where is this strength coming from? Because we don't see it nowhere on you. But what they got to understand, that you don't see the Spirit of God. You just watch the Spirit of God move by itself. Uh, ain't it good to know that you never know who you're talking to? The brother next door to you might have the questions to all of your life. The brother next door to you might not look like that. Might not look like you want him to look. Might not be the man you think he is. But the bottom line, down inside of him, God has put something in him that may be able to solve every question that you ever had because it's not the man that you're looking at. It is the Holy Ghost. Uh, I had to learn that a long time ago. I had to learn a long time ago to quit looking at the outward appearance and start looking at a man's heart. Because it is God that makes a man who he is. It's not his clothes, it's not his car, it's not his job, it's not his occupation, none of that. It is God that makes a man who he really is. Samson, Samson, he, you cannot mention his name without mentioning Delilah. It kind of goes together. Out of all the stories in the Bible, you can ask any sinner anywhere. He might not know anything about Moses. He might not know anything about Joshua. 
He might not know nothing about Abraham, but when you mention Samson and Delilah, something about it that they remember that story. Some, especially men remember that story. Because if you talk about it, I got to say this, that Delilah was every woman's nightmare. <laughs> And Delilah was every man's fantasy. Something about Delilah. You know what gets me about the story about Delilah? The Bible never describes what she looks like. All of this stuff that she's doing, and it doesn't say that even she was beautiful. Or was she fine? somewhere in the back of a, a back room somewhere and just kind of laying it out. I'm not, I'm not, I, I don't want to do the text something that wrong. I, it's bigger in the text than that. And the reason why is because the lie can be anybody. And the lie can be anything. In fact, it is, I really want to go ahead and say it here in Dallas, the lie could have been a man. Oh, excuse me. I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. No, it's just she could be, she could be, she could be anything, because Delilah is a spirit. Let me say that again. Delilah really is a spirit. It was never about the woman. It was always about the spirit in the woman. I, I, let, me, let me say something to you. It's gonna get see see Delilah. See see, see you got, Samson didn't stumble upon Delilah. Delilah was sent. Let me say that again. He didn't stumble upon her. She was sent. And I say to every man here, let me tell you something. The devil don't let you stumble upon what you like. He sent, Lord have mercy. He sends what you like. He don't bother with you with the stuff that he knows that you don't want. He's been tracking you down ever since you were a little boy. He's been studying you and finding out where your strengths and your weaknesses are. When, when your daddy left you or your mama beat you or you saw your daddy abuse your mama or you seen your daddy go to jail or, or you seen you lost the house and you had to go live with your grandmama and, and you seen that some coach tried to molest you in the, in the locker room. The devil has been studying in you all of your life to find out what he can use in order to take you out with. Delilah was sent. She, she, she was, she was tailor-made because you got to understand if this was about sex, Samson would have been through with that because you got to understand he jumped out of the bed with the harlot and gazed and went on about his business. Because it wasn't nothing but sex. But let me say something to you, men. Delilah gave Samson something that men don't know what to call it every now and then. They just know that they need it. It's called intimacy. See, when you're a boy, you don't know anything about that. But as you get older, intimacy is a little different. Delilah was different about it. She wasn't just about sex. She, she was about getting with him and, and, and finding out what he liked. And, 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 and let me say something to, uh, and just let me park right here, men, and just talk to the women just for a minute. Let me tell you something. It is three things that every woman needs to know in order to keep her man. 
Lord. Oh, Lord. I'm in deep water now. I'm dealing. Every woman, there's three things that you need to know to keep your man. Because Delilah did all three of them. And the first thing you need to know is how to talk to your man. See, I know you thought it was your hips and your movement and how you wore size 5 or 6 or 12 or 26 or 54. Because I got to say it like that because everybody don't like the same thing. Some people like fat meat and some people don't want a bone. But everybody don't like. <laughs> yeah. Everybody don't like the same thing. But every man is just like his maker. He wants to be praised. Let me say that again. We're just like our maker. We want to be praised. If you praise a man, if you talk to him right and tell him what he wants to hear, oh, king, how wonderful you are. Baby, you look so good today. Woo-wee. You know, look at all of them muscles. Yeah, a man could be getting groceries out of the car and, and have two sacks. And, 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 and you say, baby, don't try to take that second one because, you know, that sack is pretty heavy. But I know you're strong. You can get it. Oh, I can get it. <laughs> you know, it's something, <laughs> something about him that will make him go over and above. Just the way you talk to him. Have you ever been in the grocery store and seen a woman? I, I, I'm just talking to the woman. Seen a woman and you looked at her and she had this, this man and you said to yourself, how in the world? You ever, you ever did? Oh, oh now y'all quit y'all playing church now. You, know, you, 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 you ever see that? How in the world did she get him? And you can't think of the life of her me, what it is about her, because you can't find nothing. You just, you're like, Lord, have mercy. But you got to understand, it ain't what she looked like, it's what she said. Because what you say go farther than what you look like. Because whenever the gray hair has come into your head and your waist has turned into a barrel and you looking like everything, gravity has pulled you down, you better have something to say to keep the man in the house. She, 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 she talked to Samson. The next thing she does, she, 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 she knew how to touch him. You know, I, 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 I don't know. I think sex is overrated because I know it's 99.9% .9 mental. Oh, that's okay. You'll get that on the way home and 1% physical because if I don't want you, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> See what I'm saying? So, so, so she, but she knew how to touch him and she, she, she touched him in subtle ways, not just in bedroom and all that kind of stuff. She, she knew how to stroke him. Look at him. He finds himself with his head in her lap. And she talking to him, stroking his head. He, 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 he's ready to tell her everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's some stuff that you'll tell at that time that you won't tell nobody else. You might be shamed what you told in the morning. That's okay. But she knew how to touch him. And then, then the third thing, she gave him a place to rest. Be careful, men, where you rest. See, let me, let me say something to you. All rest ain't sleeping. See, some rest is being able to pick up a telephone and tell somebody how you feel and what's bothering you. And it gives you a rest down in your spirit because it gives you a peace that surpasses all understanding because you're able to talk and get that thing out to somebody that you feel like understands you and really cares about what you're saying. Instead of somebody across the newspaper in the morning with a cup of coffee that looks with rollers in her head and says these words, I'll be glad when you get out of here. But I'm saying, be careful where you lay your head. Delilah, Delilah knew what to do, but the bottom line is the girl was greedy. She did everything for money. But Samson thought he could handle it. 
he was like a moth to a flame. You know how you ever seen a moth on a flame? They don't really want the light. I mean, they don't really want the heat. They just want the light. And every now and then they get too close and you see them jump back because that's what Samson did. He, he, he played with it. You know, let, let me say something to somebody and understand. How many of you fish? You mean, how many of y'all are fishermen? Raise your hand. You, you're a fish. If you know anything about fishing, you know, whenever you go fishing, you try to use the right bait to catch the right fish. But let me say something to you. It ain't so much the bait that you're using that catch fish. Because, listen to me, it ain't the bait that really catches the fish. It's the hunger of the fish. Yeah, that's all right. It's the hunger of the fish. Because if the fish ain't hungry, they ain't bite nothing. And that's the same thing with a man. If he's not hungry, he's not biting anything. That's why a man has to make the Lord his shepherd that he shall not want. And he can walk in the ways of God and not, oh Lord Jesus, be looking for the voids in his life. Because God fills every void in your life. And if you let God, he'll fill it up to the brim that whenever you are enticed, you're not enticed and led away by your own lust because you already understand that I already been filled because God's spirit has taken care of everything that I've been missing. But you got to let God take care of that. See, it's, it's not the bait. It's not the bait. It's the hunger in the man. So Delilah, she does her thing. And, and, and the thing that I want to really say this to you, I hope that you can get to this. But you notice the first thing that they do to Samson, they blind him. I was looking in the scripture, and do you know that God healed more blind men than he did anybody? You know why? Because a man got to have vision. When a man's vision is gone, he might as well go head on and cover himself up and see the hill. Because when your vision is gone, you cannot see where you're going, and you cannot see where you're being. When your vision is gone, you cannot think of the things that you want to do in life. And you cannot lead your family because you got to be able to see where you're going for somebody else to follow you. So God, he tries his best to make sure that all men have visions. I always say these words, if you can get your vision right, you can see farther than you've been. But if you can't get your vision right, you'll stay in the same place and you'll stagnate everybody that's following you. The blind leading the blind, the Bible said they're all going to fall in a ditch. So we got to be careful with our vision. Make sure that you're looking at the right thing. I'm not talking about women. I'm talking about you being so ambitious that you forget that it is God that you must look through. He is your telescope to where you're going. If you don't look through God, you'll look through your own eyes, lean to your own understanding, and you'll be destructive. So Samson, he began to try to play around. See, one thing I tell folks is a lot of folks go to church and they feel like they can play with sin and get back to the church. That's what Samson did. She asked him, say, where your strength lie? He said, watch this. You bind me with some feathers. Dang. She bind him. He broke loose. <laughs> See, there's some people, you, 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 you think that you can go to the strip club and come back in here and praise the Lord, but glitter is on your face, boy. Who shall ascend unto the hill? Only them that have a pure heart and clean hands. Clean hands. You got to be careful. You can't straddle the fence like Samson did. He was over there for a while. He touched. He talked a little bit. He told a lie. And then she tried to do something. And then he was back to his old self again. You know, and it's just like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. You never know who you're going to get. I, I, I remember one brother, I ordained, I ordained one time, and he fell off the wagon, and, and I seen him somewhere in the park, and he was drinking, and I hollered out, and I said, hey, Preacher Barry. He hollered back and said, don't call me Preacher in here. <laughs> uh, not, 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 not today. <laughs> Wait till we get to the church. Because you, 
You think that you can fool God by straddling the fence and playing with the fire and not get burnt. But let me say something about fire. Fire does not have any friends. Fire will jump out on you when you think you've got it contained. If you don't watch it, fire will consume you and burn everything down, and you'll be the only one knowing that you shouldn't have played with those matches. So he played around until the fire caught him. And when the fire caught him, watch this, the woman that he thought that was with him went and got paid. Let me say something to you before I leave you today. Nothing in your life, men, should be more important to you than serving God. No, 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 no. I got to say it because when you let anything get in front of you serving God, it becomes your God. And that's the thing that you will have to call on in the wee-wee hours of the night or when you really need something. You will be surprised how many people will hang up the phone on you in your time of need. You will be surprised that when you need a ride, how many people will play like they did not see you on the side of the highway. You will be surprised if you ever lose your job, how many people will call and bring a check by so they can give you some groceries. You will be surprised if you ever get sick, how many visits you get in the hospital. You might get one, but that's about it. Nobody comes back to see the sick because the bottom line is, what can you do in there? They don't want to be there. It's an ugly sight and nobody wants to go. So you have to call on Jesus because he is an ever-present help in your time of trouble he will never leave you nor forsake you and he don't have a trick for you he has everything that you need and all you have to do is stay faithful to him and don't break the vows that God gave you